GTSA GTSA points or something because like the top three are still really close. Good morning, everybody. Great to have you with us here as we are getting ready to go racing for round 12 of the Pirelli World Challenge GTS presented by Kaset Class Championship. Two different categories, the GTS Pros, the GTS Am guys. will be setting sail here in just a few minutes. This is the 12th round of the championship for the GTS field. I'm Greg Creamer, joined by Calvin Fish. Jeff Lepper will be down in pit lane. You have a great view there of that field as it is set to go. And uh, there are, I think one of the interesting things is bookending this field. At the front, you've got Lawson Aschenbach, who made a big step yesterday with uh, his race alongside Ian James. You're not doing a standing start, so it's going to be interesting to see what the guys behind can do. But there are fast guys at the back of this field, too. Yeah, there really are. It's going to be a dynamic race. I think you've got guys like Baptiste who got parked yesterday, uh, suddenly going to be trying to make some moves, but maybe a bit more disciplined today, hopefully. you got Clennon back there. He got involved yesterday. Courtney, who's always shown pace here, qualified on the third row for the first race. So uh, going to be interesting to see the dynamic as they try and slide their way towards the front of the field. Now, keep in mind, folks, as always, especially on the second day of the doubleheader, as you're enjoying, we hope, certainly, your uh, coverage here of the various races we're going to have today. Right now, GTS will have GT a little bit later. Um, we are also working on building our CBS Sports Network show, so you're kind of eavesdropping, and there may be some layouts on occasion where we're going to a break and then having a conversation with producers and the like. But uh, we'll certainly at least try and bring the audio up so you can enjoy that. And whenever we can, we're happy to come back and continue to call things. But, yeah, I think we're in for a uh, fascinating race. The conditions today couldn't be any better. I mean, it's a cool, beautiful morning here. And uh, the wind seems to have dropped just a little bit as well. So just absolutely glorious. Just a magnificent weekend. Such a venue. A lot of fans here this weekend. Big slate of racing uh, forecast for today, of course. So, um, and you couldn't get off to a better start. I mean, look at that racetrack. It's magnificent, really challenging. Various surfaces there you can see with the patches. You've got a lot of elevation change, so it certainly keeps the drivers on their toes. And uh, probably take a lap or two to get into the sweet spot with the operating temperature with the Proli P zeros, but shouldn't be a major hurdle. And again, they are doing a rolling start today. Basically. The, the front straight where we would have to do the standing start is so tight in yeah. terms of length and width. We saw what happened last year, just a slight touch, and we were yellow for a long yeah, time. Yeah, there's nowhere to go. You kind of get pinched there under the bridge as we're looking at right now. So they're basically <laughs> up in about second gear where they all have to funnel in. So I think it's the wise move and um, should make for a good clean start. But as we know, starting on that back straightaway, Greg, there's always opportunity down into the S's. That there is, and uh, we've seen from the outside, you can make that work. Uh, you just have to be close enough along the outside to be able to close the deal on the exit. But uh, Ian James certainly capable of that. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see the drag race between these two V8s. Yeah, it certainly will. And uh, we've seen them uh, have some close competition this year. <laughs> yeah. VIR certainly stands out as a magnificent uh, finish. Uh, Ian was further back on in the grid yesterday, so getting on the front row with a car that swept to the races at Road America. Um, I think they'll be looking for some great things here this afternoon, and Lawson, as always, will keep his eye on the big prize, which is the championship, but he's got such a demanding lead right. now. I think uh, if there's an opportunity of another victory, he's going to be going for it. Well, and in this cool morning air, which means the track is not necessarily going to be all that warm either, both of those V8s run a little bit heavier because of the uh, the horsepower. Uh, that certainly gets those tires it temperatures does. up quick. So this is an opportunity for these guys to kind of escape a little, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, it's all about sort of generating that tire temp and getting into that sweet spot as we just discussed uh, with the Pirellis. So uh, heavier cars will certainly do that for you. going to be interesting to see here in the second row you've got Harry Gottsacker who was on the pole for yesterday's race set a, uh, his first pole position time and uh, was a pro as well so looking forward to a good show for him and Ernie Francis up in the mix this is going to be a lot of fun we're going to pause when we come back it's our CBS Sports Network coverage well that sets the stage the field is ready let's get down to Jeff Leppard at the front of the grid for that command 
Well, thank you so much. And to get things underway here today, it will be from Forge Line Wheels, Steve Shart and his beautiful daughter here to give our command today. Drivers, Drivers start, start your engines. engines. All right, Greg and Cal, excited stuff down here as we're ready to go racing. We are indeed Pirelli World Challenge, the way racing should be. And this GTS feel going to be good. They're going to be led away by that beautiful Cadillac ATS V. Uh, that is the uh, safe safety and pace vehicle for this event and there it goes leading these cars out on the track once again unique starting procedure here as well cal uh in that they will start actually on the back straight if you will uh, just because of the extra space as we watch the atsv safety car here's a look at our cadillac escalade as that is also provided by our great partner cadillac as our safety and the immediate response vehicle great to have them as a partner but they'll actually do a full lap here then continue around through this part of the track and pick up the green and as we've got a little time here before we then go green cal let's talk about our pirelli keys to the race it's got to start with lawson up front lawson up front and can that sweep pattern continue we've had drivers sweep every weekend so far in gts competition lawson getting his first victory yesterday he starts from the pole but he's got a lot of competition up front here today ian james after a media uh, qualifying performance on day one suddenly at the front ernie francis jr who was always very quick qualified did not run yesterday's race he's going to be a factor today. he's a wild card i he love is. watching him he uh, he's a great little racer and that forward has certainly got a lot of pace this weekend and also you've got some very fast guys at the back and a very close championship battle in gtsa the top three covered by very few points it got interesting after everything that evolved yesterday and let's jump down to the pits real quick check in with jeff lepper well, you see that PF Racing Ford Mustang there starting in the third position. The rule is with the two-driver format, James Pesek raced that car yesterday. During the qualifying session, they came in for a pit stop. Ernie Francis Jr. and James Pesek splitting that car. They each put on their own set of Pirelli P0 tires. And based on Ernie Francis Jr. qualifying time, minus one position is where he starts here today. Jason Bell in that Sin R1 from Franklin Manor. He's had a devastating last three races. Great qualifying here on the Ampole. Look for him to recover here strong today. Yeah, great pole run for him. It's great to see him back at the front. At one point, led the GTSA championship. So we're going to step away quickly. When we come back, we're going racing here at Mid-Ohio. Welcome back, everybody. The field ready to go here for this 12th round of the Pirelli World Challenge GTS presented by KSIT Championship, all part of the Mid-Ohio Grand Prix presented by Honda. And let's take a look quickly at our Porsche race analysis. The track, a busy one, uh, and obviously two and a quarter miles with a sizable field on it. The weather, absolutely stunning. Now let's take a look at our quad box that is uh, featuring the glorious cameras of Replay XD. And here's just a look at a few that we'll be able to look at as this race unfolds today. And now, Cal, they are starting to form up side by side. Two V8s up front and that big blue one sitting in the second row. Yeah, some feisty youngsters on row two as well. Harry Gottsack had the pull yesterday. Only Francis Jr., his first start of the weekend. They'll be anxious to get going. They come out of the turn here, looking up at the start line as they're in the VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone. The front row under the control of the starter. As soon as that flag flies, they will go. And there they go. We are green. Lawson getting a little jump. And it looked like Ian was just laid back a little bit. I'm not sure that's what he wanted to do. See if he can do something up and around the outside. Courtney trying to get aggressive right away. Way at the back. And a problem for Bell. The GTSA pole center, Cal. There is. He's stranded there at the back of the field. Lawson Archibald gets the jump, gets that inside line. Ian James thought about it the long way around, but couldn't make it stick. Ernie Francis, though, did get around the outside of Gottsacker. He did. Good start there. Parker Chase making moves early as well in the other Janetta. 
an eye on that red Sinar One. That is uh, in the GTSA category of uh, Bob McCallion, and uh, he's sort of a last-minute fill-in here as uh, Chris Bofay couldn't do it. Bob had a very good run yesterday. He certainly did. Lawson Arshin back just as he did yesterday. Seems to be in control of this racetrack. Look at that. That is a huge gap to establish yeah. in just half a lap, essentially. We saw him now on a restart just take off into a different zip code. That car is hooked up this weekend. Well, they have every time we've seen them come here, Black Dog Speed Shop, in the Chevrolet, uh, Chevrolet Camaro, certainly with Lawson when he was running it, then Michael Cooper and the like, they always roll that thing off the trailer, and it is just spot on in terms of setup. They just get it, don't they? They really do, and even though it's a different platform for this year, and certainly a lot of that information will transfer from one brand to another. Here we go, look at this. Whoa. Side by side in the break zone for the keyhole. Nate Stacey down at the inside. Barker gets aggressive, takes the line back. Parker chase looking for a way through as well. Good yeah. racing here. That little door shut <laughs> uh, slowed up Stacy, and it gave Parker just enough mo around the outside. He's able to make it work, but he immediately goes into protect mode, Cal. He does. I think the Janetta is struggling a little bit compared to some of the other marks down this back straightaway. Stacy gets a run on him. Can he make it stick to the outside? Great racing here. Parky hanging on to that position up front, and Nate not quite close enough. Although Parker leaving that door open as they get to the top of the S's. He does, and I don't think the tire temp is quite there yet. Stacey was scrambling for grip there on the exit of turn four. I thought I saw Harry Gottsacker in the Janetta a couple of laps back. The car just flat sliding a little bit. I think it's just this track has been slipperier than many remember it. And also, it's so cool. But look at the run. Barky had a little slide there. And for a second, Parker had an opportunity. He did. But the Janetta's got a little bit more pace in certain areas of this racetrack. He's been hit his marks perfectly. Barky's struggling a bit. He's got more weight on that crossbow this weekend. Yeah, they sort of changed the whole approach to the BOP, didn't they, with the series? You know, uh, giving him more power, but giving him more weight. Well, it's such a weird dynamic with that crossbow. It flies around the corner, so lightweight, easy on the tires, yet doesn't have the straightaway speed. So they're giving it more RPM, but put more weight on it to try and get it more into the dynamic of the rest of the field. I think more raceable early, I think, was the uh, concept, wasn't it? And uh, by the way, looking forward to uh, watching the uh, charge of Bob McKaylee. And oh, here we go. Up and around the outside. Parker tried it here before. He yes. might make it stick now. He did. That is beautiful. That is great oh. racing there. Giving each other just enough room. Superb. That was clean in respect. Stacy, an interested observer at this point. But he wants some big points. He made a move around Baptista yesterday in the championship standings. Look now up this. to fourth. To give it a go here. He's, well, he might be placed to get Parker. Oh, oh, big slide by Parker. He did. He had to give him room. That gets him out in the gray where the grip is not for him. Good catch. Nice car control there by Parker Chase. And Parker just had to breathe it there. Now, Stacy going to try. No, he got the door shut there. Look, Gable's having a strong run from the back. He sure of the field. is. I think he's a little frustrated. I talked to him after the race yesterday, and he said, I'm mad, I'm upset, and it's at me. He said, I just made a mistake. And he said, I don't race like that. That really upset me. And I think he's going to put on a show today. As this has popped down just a little bit, let's get down to the pits uh, and hear from Jeff on the problems for Jason Bell. Yeah, I spoke with John Maraki at Racer's Edge. Devastated. We talked about pre-race and how he's looking to recover here. Electrical problem. The car would not go. He did a quick reset, got back underway, but now he has to play catch up. Yeah, he had a great race yesterday. Fast lap starting on pole. That's a tough, tough development. For uh, him to have that happen here, he's had a tremendous season at one point leading in the points, did have a win earlier in the year. Yeah, he's really made a great impression on this championship, as Jeff alluded to, just hasn't had a good run of luck, and uh, sometimes you're just going to fight that. And you look there at that number three, Flying Lizard's Porsche in the hands of Rodrigo Baptista. That is our Optima Battery's Best Start Award winner of six positions in the opening lap we knew that he was going to be coming and coming hard from the back and he is doing exactly that we're going to pause for just a moment here at mid ohio we will be right back early in the going in gts presented by casey Sports Network coverage back with you here on our web stream. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us here. And look at that. I mean, just that shot, not a cloud in the sky. This is uh, just a phenomenal morning. 
driving in here, and uh, we're seeing some awful strong racing that's unfolding here right now. So now the question is, can Parker Chase make up about a four-second deficit to his teammate, Harry Gottsacker, and get up in that uh, battle near the front? Yeah, I mean, typically those guys are very evenly matched, but this weekend, Harry Gottsacker seemed to have the pace over Parker, so I'm not sure if it's just a different setup or... Gotsaka just really uh, tuned in this weekend. Had the pole position yesterday, turned that into a podium run. He runs in fourth position right now. In his fastest lap, about half a second up on his teammate. Yeah, when I talked to some of the guys in the team, they said that Harry just had that glint in his eye this weekend. They said he just seems just ultra focused, really, really intent on putting on a good show here. Good battling going on here in the GTS category. That's the 0 4 that red and white McLaren. It says CrowdStrike on it and GMG Global Motorsports Group on the front, leading the similar McLaren, the tender belly entry of Mark Lennon, who was involved in an incident yesterday. And uh, right behind them is Jeff Courtney, ironically, was involved in that incident. Oh, there is Baptista picking off another spot, making the move on McCallion, so that should put up him now into the ninth spot. He's got some ground to make up, though, to uh, Tony Gables, who's having a great day today. Yeah, Baptista making moves, but in a more disciplined way than yesterday. Obviously got way too aggressive on that initial start. Hence the contact with Roberts. Got parked for the rest of the afternoon. All right, folks, we're going to be coming back with our CBS coverage in just a minute. So we're going to take a brief pause. Lawson Aschenbach continues to lead here in round 12 of the Pro League World Challenge GTS Championship presented by Kaysen. All part of the Pro League World Challenge Grand Prix of Mid-Ohio presented by Honda Racing and right now we've got three V8s up front and then you've got Mr. Gottsacker coming after it and uh, trying to join this group at this stage but the other guy that's a big story right now is Rodrigo Baptista as he continues his march toward the front just laid down a nice pass on Bob McKaylee and while we were away here's a look at uh, what happened there it's just uh, some great racing right now from Rodrigo. Yeah, he got the slipstream down the back straight away and hard into the brake zone, just takes it in way deep. You can see the car twitching right on the threshold there, but making some moves early. And he needed to do that, obviously, after the issues yesterday. It hurt him in the points, dropped to fifth at this stage. I mean, right now, Lawson Aschenbach has a sizable point lead at this stage, but the battle behind him is still relatively fierce. Oh, and George Kurt. That was close. Ooh. That was nearly a biggie. Dropping those tires. He really had that run on McKaylee and wanted to do something with it, but uh, just ran a little bit wide. And boy, there is the Maserati, Kenda Rexdeff Maserati, 99 of Courtney, all over the orange McLaren right now of Mark Clennon. Clennon, an A driver, and Courtney, and a full pro driver. Yeah, those two guys involved in the incident with Gables up into the keyhole yesterday. So a lot of work for these teams last night, getting these cars into ship shape for race two. Yes, and right after that incident, as Jeff's car turned and we could see the right side of it, which is the side that Gables got into, it was doorless. I mean, it just peeled that thing off. So, uh, yeah, he that crew had some work to do and got it ready to go, and that's impressive stuff. Look at this, he and Jamie yeah, closing the race off, awesome folks. Yeah, yeah as these tire temps are coming up, pressures are coming up. Ian James has a lot of pace, just laid down a fast race lap, half a second quicker than Lawson Oshenbach, so he is eating into that lead in a hurry. Talk about the sweep, potential keys to victory. Well, Lawson's going to have a battle on his hand today. Stacy having a nice clean run here. Gable's very impressive. And there is Nate Stacy, and right behind him, as we're talking about Tony Gables, you can see that number 11 Black Duck Speed Shop Camaro. That's the one that got involved in that incident up into the keyhole, and uh, it too had some pretty significant damage. And uh, not only yeah, the Black Dog crew obviously has that thing working, but Tony's given it a run today. He's having a very strong weekend, and I know he was frustrated with that move uh, yesterday. He made a little mistake just going way too deep then into the gray area of the racetrack where there's no grip. We saw the consequences with the big hit, but the car's working well. He's going to be frustrated to have lost that lead in the GTSA point standings, so he needs a good rebound here today. And he's doing exactly that right now, leading in the A category over the very impressive Bob McCallion and then George Kurtz. Now the point leader in that category, he took the point lead from Tony after the incident, sits in third. So Tony, as you said, well motivated today on a lot of different uh, causes here. Here goes Harry Gottsacker still hanging on in front of Parker Chase. Here's that lead battling, and the Panos is definitely closing in. Ian James flying right now. 
And that car, Cal, also carries our Eibach suspension cam. And uh, we've talked about it before, so many pavement changes and the like. The key for this track is mechanical grip. It really is. 7-5 for the engineer there, and the whole group have worked really well at getting the Avizano really dialed in throughout the course of this year. It's working well here this weekend. Had a balanced performance change, a little bit more weight on the car this weekend, which really loads that suspension even more. Look at this, a little bit of a scrap here as Courtney took a look apparently at Clennon and couldn't quite get it done. As you can see, Kurtz now has gone around the 45 of Bacalian. So Kurtz is going to see what he can do. He's got a bit of a deficit right now to Gables, but that McLaren has shown tremendous speed. It really has been very impressive this year. Had some mechanical problems earlier in the season, but everyone seems to be on top of that now, running reliably, and that means you're getting more track time. And able to dial the car in through the course of the weekend. Ooh, and look at Lawson. Nice rotation on that Camaro as he feeds it in right behind him. I just wanted to mention about the uh, Panos team. Uh, they're partnering with a group that's called Hometown Heroes, and it's basically a foundation set up by Michael Murphy based out of New York to build camaraderie and honor and promote the action of local fire, EMS, police, and all military personnel across the nation uh, from the hometown perspective. So that's a pretty cool program that they're involved in. But just an interesting little note here. When the American Le Mans Series debuted here at Mid-Ohio in 2001 at Panos Roadster, one of those thundering machines of uh, front drive prototype technology that uh, got the win with David Bradman and Jan Magnuson behind the wheel. So Panos and Mid-Ohio, they've got some history here. Can Ian James close it up and do something with it? He got a run right here. Lawson staying put. No, and that's the quick line in. And he holds on to it for the moment. And so for the moment, we're going to take a quick break. But don't go anywhere. This is way too good. Well, back with you here on the web stream. And... Tell you, Ian James has found speed. Whatever the issue was that kept him back a little bit in qualifying, they've cured it. It's plateaued a little bit, though. He was yeah. really coming hard at uh, Lawson Oschenbach, and Oschenbach got deep and found a little bit of pace, but maybe he's having to use the tires a little bit more than he'd like to. It's all about managing. Lawson's so good at that, but with the pressure from behind, he's probably having to use those tires a bit more than he'd like to this early in the race. Yeah, in a race like this, and obviously where the cars are, are BOP'd fairly close, you need the lead if you can, because making the pass, this as great as this track is, passing here, not always the easiest thing to do. It isn't, but Ian's taking a look. I think he does have definitely a little bit more straightaway speed in Lawson, and plus the advantage with the draft here. From his previous lap on the run down the back straightaway, midway down, he seems to start to inch in on him. Let's take a look. of Jeff Courtney continuing to come after the number 45 of McKaylee. He got to run that time. He looks way down to the inside. And you can see one of the issues that Jeff has to deal with is just the simple fact that that Maserati does not have ABS, so he can't just bend it right down to the right. apex, can he? No, it's certainly a great asset to have on your car if you do have ABS. Just get it down there, just jump on that middle pedal and uh, try and get it slowed down. But certainly has to be uh, conscious of that. And he's a very clean driver. He's very respectful. He's not going to take any chances. He wants to make moves. But as you can see there, just feels his way through versus just total commitment. I'm guessing right there, hopefully the crew was talking to Bob McCallion and when Jeff got up inside, instead of racing him and maybe wrecking, said, that's a pro guy. He's not in your class. You know, if, if he really gets after you, just let him go. You're doing a great job still at this stage in the top three in the GTSA category for that red number 45 Sin R1 GT four machine which uh, is I think one of the prettier race cars you can oh, see. It's beautiful. <laughs> There's great lines there but this battle is going nowhere. Arshabak continues to lead looking for that sweep of the weekend. What an amazing trend that is. It's not that hard to believe but right. if you win the first race you've got pace and if you've had pace you're typically going to have a good grid slot for the next day but even so it's uh, crazy that they're on this trend. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much that can happen and for it not to happen in those second races and allow you to repeat right now. And look at this. Harry Gottsacker is snuck around on Ernie Francis. And look like James went for that outside move into the S's. And Lawson went in really deep on the brakes and was able to cover it here. So it's a great battle going now. 
problem for Gottsacker is he's now seven seconds adrift of Oshenbach and James. So this battle, uh, the pace of this battle has been actually torrid, Dell. It really has. And it's somewhat a bit of a surprise because the Genetas have looked so strong all weekend long. And Gottsacker's pull was an indication of that. But come race day, it doesn't seem like they have quite the uh, sharpness on their blade as these two. Tricky bit of track, this. Well, both these guys know their racetrack very well. Yeah. Oshabak's had so much success, but Ian James was uh, an instructor here at the Mid-Ohio School, so he'll not certainly know every nuance <laughs> of this facility. You did some instructing here over the years. Uh, you have your people that are wandering through the paddock go, hey, I've been struggling with. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of people come out and say, remember when we took the uh, school together? Certainly great memories here. Oh, look at this. Oshabak defending there. Didn't want to give a full car width there on the run up to the keyhole. James definitely has the pace here to make a move. Well, Lawson, obviously, at the level that he is capable of, he's got eyes in the back of his head. This is as close as being, I think. He's going to pop out here as they get through the king. Welcome back. The battle is on for the lead in GTS Cal. Ian James has been hunting, and he's looked to the outside before while we were at break. And man, he is on full attack. He is working him over big time. Lawson Arshamak trying to hang on here, but that Painos has tremendous speed. Really quick down the back straight away. I think it could just be a matter of time. Well, he's had a couple of real good runs into the keyhole and into the S's. And he has seems to have the understanding there's a couple of spots here. Lossy, you just see that car yeah, starting to flat slide a little bit. Yeah, he's having to push that car a little bit more than he'd like to this early in the going. And Ian is getting out of the carousel and through turn one extremely well. So Lawson immediately goes into protect mode. See if he does it again this time, coming out from under the bridge at turn one. They could really see that he was fighting that down in the break zone for the carousel. Lawson Arshenbach is definitely digging deep, trying to hang on to this lead. This is where we've seen Ian really exit here strong, does it again. You can just see that Panos is just putting the power down. Oh, he's got a great run. Yep. Lawson takes that inside line. See what happens up here if Ian can do the undercut. Let's try and get that late tuck in. This should give him really good exit speed here. If he can time it, Lawson's a little bit sideways. James gets a run. He is closer than ever before. This is it. He was there way earlier than usual, Cal. Pops to the outside, side by side, as they cross the start line back there. Look at now. that. Lawson tries to move him out <laughs> wide. He's still trying to hang on here. Great racing. James will try and hang to his flank. He can't do it. Lawson, great racecraft there. Just takes it away from him. Well, one of the strengths of that Camaro in every form we've ever seen it in GTS racing, Cal, is brakes. Yeah, it's really strong, but Lawson's a master in oh, terms yeah. of just placing that car exactly where it needs to be, taking away the potential passing opportunities. But Ian James has pace in that Panos right now. He really does. Up and over the rise. That's turn nine. They call it madness here. And it's a, you're apexing right over a brow that falls away. Everything falls away from you. You have to turn in anticipating what's going on, don't you? You really do. It's a beautiful rhythm part of the racetrack. But I'll tell you what, I think the most significant thing is I think Lawson Oshimax is having to use his tires a lot more than he'd like to. You can see him just sliding the car a little bit. Ian James probably got a big smile on his face just working him over here. Well, Lawson looks to be using a lot more racetrack to maintain this pace as well you can see ian when he exits most of the time he's a couple of feet inside and again he gets this run into the keel but lawson you know the rule is you you can take any line you want just so it's not a reaction to somebody and lawson knows the game here comes out of a turn immediately moves to where he wants oh, to go that's close that's, he's maybe just ahead but yeah. only fractionally it's a fine margin right now between getting the call from the stewards in terms of being <laughs> reacting to that that was the first time I'd say he really maybe reacted a little bit. I mean, he was going there anyway. We knew that. But Ian was trying to force the issue. Whoa! This is now Ian in. inside, is now outside. Yeah, this is tremendous. Two of the best. So reminiscent of those closing laps of VIR just a few months ago. Yes. All right, here we go, heading toward madness. The Panos right now just looks stuck compared to the Camaro. It, it really does. And uh, I think this is going to be a real stretch here for Lawson Archambault. We know he's a master of managing, but when you're under this much heat from behind, thinking about your tire management at the same time is extremely difficult. Carousel one more time. He lets it float just a little bit more there before he diamonds it. 
He just wants to set up a little bit of a gap so he can get a good clean run without losing the front arrow as he goes through turn one. This is where he's really strong. He just carries the rolls a little bit more apex speed. He comes off a of turn one with a bit more pace. Austin just stays to the inside. James, a couple laps ago, just turned fast laps. So this, that's the pace of this battle. He now is for Lawson Arshin back. He's got to guess which way is Ian James going to move. Oh, Lawson, quick. that's not a good exit there. He is there. He is there. This is going to be tight. Austin just squeezes him a little bit. He actually tucked into the draft there for just a second. I don't know if it's going to give him enough to pop. Nope, not quite. See what he does see. He's going to try. Ooh, no, no, wiggle no, no Ian's just thinking about it. He, he has the choice of which way to go. It's all about a decision. Not, not like he's forced to just go one way, Greg, right now with the painos. He can make a choice. That's a big difference. Yep. And you got to believe that right now the officials have been on the radio to Lawson's team just saying, be careful. Yep. You know, it, well, one thing you'll see Lawson Oshenbach do, he'll be in discussion with the stewards a lot during the course of the weekend. He's yeah. very clear in terms of he wants to understand exactly where that line is, where he can drive to, how defensive he can get, what curbs he can use around a race circuit. By the way, an update, we are hearing from Pitt Lane that the number three of Baptista, who was flying, Cal, has had to duck into the pits, apparently having to change a tire. Not exactly sure what may have happened. That's a tough break because he had a good charge through the pack coming. And again, Ian just looking to the inside, making sure he's flashing in the mirrors of Lawson Oshibach. It's a great shot out of there. That puts Lawson immediately on the defensive. Doesn't give him the ideal setup line for the turn into the keyhole. Game of chess going on right here. <laughs> Isn't it? Ian Diamond's that up just a little bit. It's like, okay, let's just try the normal line here. Not make the move too early. Just heard from race control. Lawson has indeed been warned that you're you're dabbling with. <laughs> oh, here we go. Lawson is really yep. shallow in here, and Ian tuck it back to the high side. He tries it. Lawson is doing a beautiful this job. He's just, just taking it away. Well, folks. It's such a compelling battle, but uh, we have to just take a quick break. We'll be back with you here as quick as possible. This is some absolutely phenomenal racing. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. This battle continues to be absolutely superb. Into the keyhole in mid-Ohio. Ian James taking a look on the outside. And as impressive a run as Ian James is having right now, the defense of Lawson Aschenbach is brilliant. It really is. It's just magic racecraft going on between both of these drivers. Lawson Aschenbach has been warned about potential blocking, reacting to the move rather than being proactive. James is alongside him. He's got to try and hang on his flank, but Lawson just takes it in super deep. Ian James will do the cutback here. Can he get to the high side through the S's? No, he can't. Lawson is just superb on the brakes, going in there where he needs to be. He's going in as in incredibly late and just still exiting that corner in a position that it just blunts anything Ian can do at this stage. I think the key is going to be wow. time management, yeah. Greg, because Lawson's having to push really hard. His car's been sliding a little bit more, even though he seems to have got it back under control a little bit here over the last couple of laps. It really carries some speed through Thunder Valley, too, up into turn 11. But that is a very, very tough place for him to be able to make any kind of a pass. Oh, Ian, yeah, now this is a big run down into turn one, Cal. If he can get it there, he's Surprised there. Surprised him. He's got alongside. He has got the lead. Ian James takes the lead. They go side by side oh. for one. He had shown the nose a couple of times, but it was always from a ways back. I think you're right. I think he just said, I'm going to see if I can surprise him. Yeah, I mean, I think Lawson thought he had him covered in terms of where he could potentially make the move. Now it's all about getting a good clean shot off of here, creating that buffer. And he did. 
Oh, look at that. He got out of there incredibly well. And I'll tell you, when you can surprise Lawson Aschenbach, that, that tells you something about Ian James and his ability here. Wow, what a move. Now, look at the pace opening that margin up. That was crafty. <laughs> you don't pull one on Lawson Aschenbach very often, but that was a nice move. Up and over the top of the S's. And now heading over into the area called Madness, but we're going to try and go back and take another look at that pass because it was a thing of beauty, especially when you, you, when you think about all the times he showed his nose, but I think he purposely was back a few lengths, and then this time just made it stick. Watch yeah, this. It looked like Lawson slipped a little bit through that final corner, but what a run he gets. Lawson can see him coming. And he doesn't think he has to take away the line completely. And Ian James just stuffs it in there, in the dirt, in the debris. Not a lot of grip. He's got the position, and he managed to hang on to it. Boy, and he just got such a run. He got so close to the back of Aschenbach before he really made that move. I think that may have been the surprise part. And uh, really, it's not much Lawson could do. And the thing is, is when you're inside somebody, clearly into one on the outside, if they don't lift, it's going to be a big off. And uh, so he really had him pinned, really, didn't he? He did, and just great feel between both of these yes. guys. Great racing, giving each other just enough racing room right on the boundary of uh, being out of bounds. But even so, that was great stuff. Ian didn't take the line away once he realized he had not cleared. Then he opened his hands up and got the exit speed that he needed so he didn't have to defend up into the break zone for the keyhole. Now they're coming up into some traffic, but Ian has already comfortably cleared Lawson Oshin back now. Have a look here. Good battle unfolding right now. The 0-4 of Kurtz on the move. And as I said a while ago, he had gotten around the number 45 red sin of McCallion. McCallion has not let the GTSA points leader get away. In fact, he's closed right back up. Yeah. He has, and Courtney's got around both of these guys. So Jeff Courtney's having a strong run in the number 99 Maserati. There you see him exiting on at the back straight away. Kurtz is fading a little bit. Yesterday he had a run where he seemed to get strong throughout the course of this race, but right now just a tire pressure issue maybe overpressured the tires a little yeah. bit for the race here today but even so it's been a great weekend for our gtsa championship leader and right now tony gables is six seconds up the road from this battle and tony after the incident yesterday losing that points lead to kurtz as you just pointed out um, right now the interesting thing i think mckaylian is keeping kurtz occupied and tony and that team are going thank you yeah, exactly, and uh, this is significant. It's not just a change of position overall. It's a change in class as well. If exactly. could get by Kurtz, that would be really helpful to Gaples. Yeah, take some of those points. I mean, uh, in a way, McKaylee in here is a little bit of a spoiler at uh, this point. Right now, Kurtz doing just enough to keep that sin behind him as they come out of the carousel onto the front straight. And they're looking a little further back. That's the number three of Rodrigo Baptista, who had a great run going, and it closed well up, but a long stop in the pits. Jeff Lepper, what was the problem for Baptista? They thought they might have had a tire going down. He has a soft pedal. Handling's gone away. Just not a great weekend for Rodrigo Baptista. Well, that's unfortunate, and obviously at the pace of these races, it, these races are not designed to do pit stops and, and, and tire changes. Obviously, it cost them a fair amount of time in the pits. That's a tough day for Rodrigo Baptista, one of our double winners earlier this year. We'll be right back. Well, while we're in break for our CBS Sports Network show, back with you here, and uh, uh, we have seen a, an absolutely superb example of respect, respectful, clean, aggressive driving by two of the very best. That was just a, a magic 10, 15 minutes there, just uh, watching those two uh, trade craft, if you put it that way, just giving each other just enough room to keep it clean, but uh, making it very difficult for both. And that's what these guys live for, uh, you know, a battle like that. I think Lawson, obviously, he'll be upset that he didn't get the win and, you know, the sweep and pad that points lead a little bit more. But I think even there, he's going to have a little bit of a grin on his face when this one's over because that was just stellar. And boy, I'll tell you, Bob McKinley, yeah, he is really on it. This Kurtz weekend. there is uh, <laughs> using everything he's got in terms of the grip. They're trying to hang on, but McKinley is uh, really working him over as well. 
was significant with Ian James maybe looking at his third victory of the year. That's going to close him very close to Martin Barkey for second in points. Yeah, Lawson's, you know, they need, the field needs some big help in a bad form for Lawson Aschenbach here. And you never want to wish that on it. But behind Lawson, that battle is pretty intense, as is this one, as Courtney now has caught the number 11 of Gables. And uh, Courtney, they both made their way from way back in the field, both of them having an absolutely superb day. And again, Tony looking to uh, come in. This is a possibility for Tony in terms of points to get right back into it with Kurtz after having lost it in le uh, yesterday's race. Courtney, not really a points player here, but he's just been one of the fast guys, period, this whole oh, year. He has. He's now done laps in the 128 range, which is the same as the leaders, just a few tenths off of their pace. He's about a second quicker than Tony Gables on their fast laps of the day. So, again, he's, he's going to take his time. He's a patient racer, but if there's an opportunity, he's going to make a move. He's got the pace to do it. And I think Tony obviously does not want a lift to let him through because he's trying to stay in front of that key card battle that he just saw in the back of the frame. But if Courtney can get along clean, Tony knows this is not the class. I'm not worried about that. And I'll certainly let him slide through. But I'm not just going to lift and give up two seconds to those guys that are chasing me. This is exactly the same uh, picture that we were looking at yesterday with those guys yes. uh, side by side <laughs> up in the keyhole. Oh, oh here's a move. McCaylin in the inside. They touch. Yeah, I think that was a legit move, though. I do, too. I do, too. And uh, it was a touch. They both bounced out just a little bit. It looked like they, it was a nice, it was side to side. No damage, but Kurtz got a little bit better run out of the keyhole. He does. Ooh, he He's got break. more straightaway speed there. There wasn't enough room to go at the inside. Nice job by McKaylee in positioning that sin in exactly where he needed to be. Not opening the inside lane and not giving him a clear passage to yep. the outside as well. It'll be interesting to see, one, if, if McKaylee can just kind of open that margin up now and drive away. He certainly was able to stick with him. If he can't. This is Bob's first appearance in this championship. And, uh, you know, there's a, they really do enforce that. Do not move Ooh, in react. Wide. And that was wide. He's scrambling he, he is scrambling. <laughs> Woo! You can see him get in there into the brakes. who just oh. really wide. And if you get on that curb, it's almost like a vacuum cleaner. will pull you off the racetrack. And then right there, Kurtz almost dropped his tires. You can see a little bit of the grass edge flying up. He got so close. These guys are on the limit right now. All right. Unfortunately, we get word from pit lane. The three of Baptista has retired. So something not right with that car. Weekend to forget for Rodrigo. Oh, man. He's, he's had weekends to remember that with a lot of hardware on the shelf at the end of it. And then you have something like this. Character building, and here comes Kurtz. And I think his thought was, well, Turn in the favor. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> same place. Yeah. This is a great battle. It sure is. Those guys really, really driving hard, working their cars over, trying to find grip here in the late going. It's a long green flag run here today. And this is for second and third in the class as well. Just up front, you can see the tail end of the Camaro of Tony Gables. That's the margin. Last time by, it was six seconds that Gables has. I'll tell you right now, and I, you know, I hate this announcer. There's Tony. You can just see him. I hate the announcer jinx things, but so oh, the number 80 of Barky, who had dropped back into the fifth spot, Cal, and it just looks like it got away from him. That's, yeah, a, that's exiting turn 11 there. And he's really crawling here from Stacy. Now he's able to get it going. You can go back and see what happened to Martin Barky here, Cal. Take another look here. High speed section of the racetrack just turns in, just carries a little bit too much speed, loses the tail. He was under pressure from Parker, but that yep. really wasn't the reason. Just carried a bit too much speed in and again. He's in a learning curve, Greg, with the extra weight on that crossbow exactly. this weekend. Probably tire degradation can be a factor as well. Yeah, he said it just has really made the car feel completely different to what he's been driving all year. But Jeff Courtney just continuing to try and march up. He's right now eighth overall. And at this stage, the top eight are all your GTS Pro category drivers. Then the AM class, Gables, Kurtz, McKaylee, and Clennon, and uh, Bell. But Bell is down there always. And all of this is helping Ian James in terms of that championship position. Came into this race third in the points now after a strong day yesterday. Now he leads, and with the guy in second, Barkey just recovering from the spin. Could vault him ahead by the end of the day in the checkered flag. 
And well, James is leading. He's got a little bit of breathing room. Let's come down now. Yeah, Lawson has not exactly just let him go. Last couple of laps, Lawson's been about half a second quicker than Ian James. So maybe there's a pendulum swing here in terms of that tire performance. He said it's a long green flag run here. And Ian's cars look really good yeah. here today, but maybe he suddenly picked up a slight imbalance. As you talk about a driver that's leading managing a little bit, but uh, as you said, Lawson's a little bit closer, I think, than he'd like him to be. But Ian has the great advantage here that uh, he seems, you know, straight line, he's got it, and he gets, he, he seems to be getting out of the carousel and into that little left hander, and that car's just really planted there. Yeah, and that's where you want. I mean, there's yeah. one key overtaking opportunity, but as we saw from Ian James <laughs> making that move into turn one, you can create others. Such a fun section here, and the up through the S's, the up and down, and then the drop, that little quick rise, and then up here. Turn in there is yeah. really, really difficult. Car uh, never feels right. You always feel like you leave <laughs> a little bit of something on the table when you try and push harder. Suddenly you miss it. All right, folks, we're going to pause real quick. We're going to be coming back to our CBS Sports Network coverage in just a second. Ian James continues to hold on after a great battle and run to get around Lawson Aschenbach and the Panos Avizano GT leading as they cross the line by just a tick under a second. Lawson Aschenbach, the points leader, round 11 winner yesterday. Uh, it's not as though he's let Ian just completely get away, though, pal. No, the gap had got up to about two seconds, and over the course of two laps, Lawson Aschenbach uh, sliced that in half and now has stabilized once again. Lawson Aschenbach just seven thousandths of a second quicker on that last lap, so they're really, just as they're almost trading paint, they're almost trading fast laps right now. And they've got some room at this stage, some six seconds back to Harry Gottsacker. And Harry's been able to open up a couple of uh, seconds on uh, Ernie Francis, so these two can just wage this mano a mano battle at this stage. And it has been fascinating. Uh, it's really a great battle there for many laps. Uh, for Ian James to really work over Lawson Archibald and find the lead of this race. Then he kind of created a nice margin to uh, be able to deal with traffic. You get to that two, three second range, that enables you to come up on a slower car and take your time. But right now, I don't think Lawson Archibald's going away. His car still looks pretty good. It seems like he's having to work a little bit harder than Ian James to get the lap time. But even yeah. so, it's going to be a tight one. Yeah, Lawson Camaro is just dancing a little bit more, isn't it, at this stage? So, well, I tell you, I wanted to get uh, this covered. This is Tony Gables. And not long ago, he had a six-second lead on the kurtz McCalian battle. Guess what, folks? That's come down. Kurtz is closing and closing in a fair bit. There he is. And there's Kurtz. He's been able to get away from McCalian. And once he shook him, Cal, he's been able to take a couple of seconds back on the margin to Gables. Yeah, and I really thought that they maybe missed on tire presses or something on Kurtz's car because he didn't seem to have the pace that he was displaying yesterday. But he's found a rhythm again. And uh, Tony Gables may be the guy who's struggling now in the late going. Be interesting to see if Kurtz in that Global Motorsports Group crowd strike entry. And uh, here's a good battle that's forming up after his moment for Barkey in that spin. He's uh, been able to run down Nate Stacy this battle for sixth with His Courtney right in this behind trio him. is Courtney. He, he has uh, really made some great progress throughout the course of this race, picking up places consistently, and has a lot of pace in that Maserati. Yeah, he's catching them. Oh, Barkey got a great run. Stacy knows it and just stays over to the left. Look at Courtney. He is uh, searching, looking for an opportunity. Well, with Nate protecting her. Courtney could diamond this. He might get the run coming off of the keyhole. He does. Yeah. Nice clean exit there. Bucky immediately has to protect that inside lane. Courtney's going to have to go the long way around here as they get down towards the break zone. See if he's able to get up and along the outside. I think he has. He, did I think it. he has. Nice. It. That is nice. That is beautiful. Another great position. And kudos there to Martin Barkey. And when he realized that Courtney had the move made, he just breathed it to give him room to come back in, knowing if he did that they were going to have contact and probably end up off track. He suddenly struggled there coming yeah. off of turn five. I'm not sure if it's just the gear ratio with the Maserati compared to the other, but didn't get the acceleration off. He was sliding a bit and didn't quite catch it. Well, he used every inch of the road in curve. Courtney did coming up over madness there, didn't he? Right on the edge, but uh, yeah, he is glued already to the back of Stacy. 
Look at him open the radius up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the Maserati's been really strong here this weekend. Fred Roberts, after that great qualifying run, obviously the incident early yesterday, wasn't able to display his speed. But here we go, Courtney to the inside as they get onto the brakes. Yeah, clears him. Yep. Nice job, Jeff Courtney. Courtney was a little frustrated at the end of his day yesterday, and he's done so far a great job of channeling with that red mist. <laughs> can go either way, right? Go, yep. And he's, he's turned it into positive energy. He has indeed. Look at Bartley trying the outside move to the keyhole. Not quite able to make it work. He's tucked right into the draft of this Porsche. All right, as Martin Barkey continues to try and figure out a way. Oh, what a late move. That was brilliant, wow. Cal. Popped and then just went super late on the brakes. Oh. I don't think Stacy saw that coming. No, out. that was magic. So, Courtney is through. Barkey is through. And that's going to move them up now into sixth and seventh with Stacy sitting in the eighth spot. So, a good battle unfolding there up in the uh, top of the GTSA category. It's still Tony Gaples leading. And up front overall, is Ian James over Lawson Aschenbach. And because of racing like this, we know, like us, you're huge fans of the series. If you want to know what's going on in between the events, social media is how. First place, world-challenge.com, the Crowley World Challenge site. Great video content there, links to live webcasts. You can also, of course, go to Facebook. Just search the Crowley World Challenge Championship fan page. And on Twitter, just go for the handle, at WC Racing. And, of course, for all things racing, do take a moment and check out Motor Trend On Demand, including the archives of the entire history of the Prelude World Challenge races. You can start your free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com today. We'll be right back. Well, for a while, Cal, as we're back on the web call here, Lawson was able to stay close, but now that margin's yeah. blown up to about three seconds. Yeah, a couple of bad laps there for Lawson Oshenbach. I think one of them may have been traffic induced, but even so, I uh, create a nice margin now for Ian James to be able to maybe cruise this one home. When you get that bit of breathing room, you know, you can ease off just enough where you're not taking it quite as much out of the tire. Exactly. You can still carry your speed. You can go quickly. And you don't mind if you give up two, three tenths a lap you know, just to preserve the tires. Well, I think that was what was going on with Lawson Oshenbach in the early going. He's having to push a lot harder than he wanted to, as we see Harry Gottsacker now. So make some uh, pace here in the end of the race. Not too far adrift of these uh, two front runners. No, coming up on the uh, driver running six right now in the GTSA category, Adam Merzon in the case of racing 017 Porsche GT4. Great to see these Janettas back in off field. Yeah, it is. Kind of missed them. They were so impressive last year, showed flashes of uh, potential victories particularly with Parker and Harry Gottsacker has certainly uh, come on strong here this year. Nice job there by Adam Merzon, you know, recognizing this guy's in the top three overall right now. Don't impede him. He's having a good run. Class move by Adam. And uh, interesting thing, we had at Road America, Ian Lacey Racing showed up with two of these Janettas and were very impressive in, in, in terms of their speed. And uh, he said, this is actually the track that our top driver knows best, loves the most, had a wedding wedding things i'm telling you <laughs> um and uh he said but we're you know our plan is to be back and run as many of these as we can at the end of this year to a full season so next year we could have yeah. a grid uh a little bit more stacked with these genetics they certainly add to the show that's for sure it's a great platform good looking car they really seem to get a handle on uh, the setup here let's see at the uh, line this time and it dropped to two and a half seconds last time by down to 2.2 so Lawson now and it's, I don't know if it's necessarily lost and just finding something a little bit or Ian just doing a bit of managing. Probably a bit of both. I mean, Lawson's not going to, uh, but, you know, stop trying, certainly, but he's not going to take any risk here. He just wants to uh, keep it clean, grab another bundle of points, and uh, you hate to call it early, but his championship is definitely uh, going his way as we just passed the midway point in the season. All right, we're going to uh, pause for just a minute. When we come back, we will be with our CBS Sports Network coverage. Welcome back, everybody. Is the sweep 
streak in jeopardy? That's the question everybody's asking here in GTS presented by Kaysen. And as Lawson Aschenbach won yesterday's round, every previous round, one driver and team has swept both of the doubleheader events. Lawson started on pole, but it looks like he and James may be in a position, Cal, to break the sweep. Yeah, but what a way to do it. Yeah. It's been the race of the year so far in terms of that battle for many laps between these two. That was brilliant. That's the, you know, I mean, obviously these drivers in the midst of it, that's what they live for. But so do we. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, we were both on the edge of our seats through that. That's, that's exciting stuff, and that's what GTS uh, is certainly capable of providing. There's a lot of respect between these two guys. They Absolutely. gave each other just enough racing room, but there's a good battle going on here. Parker Chase trying to get around Ernie Francis Jr. in the late going. Yeah, this is for fourth. Ernie's done a great job, but Parker. Oh, he carried huge oh, apex speed there. He's got to run on Ernie Francis Jr. They get up to the brake zone for the carousel. The keyhole, excuse me. He's going to try the outside line here. Oh, it's tough to make his run out at it. He might have, if he can stick, he's there. Yeah, that was cool. Now it's just straight line speed. Good respect from Ernie, though, giving Wasn't him that paw. Yep. Yep, Ernie. A classic example of the Pro World Challenge ladder system, starting in Turing Car B as a very young man, working his way through the Turing Car ranks. He got into GTS. He has been superb. But Parker Chase, and Janetta. Be careful, oh, be careful. Oh, boy. This awesome. is good stuff. That is great. Ernie Francis recognizing that Parker Chase was making that move, just gave him enough room, didn't just totally open the door, but yep. allowed it to happen without incident. Well, I like to say generally that kind of thing is you don't have to make you have to make it possible You can't just force the guy off and wreck him, but you don't have to make it easy. No, this is great yeah, We've yeah, seen some great really racing here today's displayed Unlike yesterday where everyone was a little bit overly aggressive today. It's been nice and I'll tell you the story here of course Ernie driving you know one of the other uh, V8s it does carry a little bit more weight and uh, Later in the race sometimes that's when these lightweight cars come alive a little bit you know, when it's cool like this, it helps those heavier cars. But uh, what Ernie's got to do now is figure out a way to get a little bit better drive. But the corner speed right now for Parker is just huge. And I think it's one of the uh, disadvantages for Ernie Francis Jr. when he's not competing in both events. You don't get that setup information from day one. Yes, he qualified and practiced the car, but he didn't run race one. So right. in terms of how to dial in the car for the long green flag run, he didn't have that information to work from. Well, that's a very good point, isn't it? You know, we've seen drivers that come in on a one-off weekend and in the first race, I remember Spencer Pompelli at St. Pete a couple of years ago, had a great run going and then just faded miserably. And the next day when he had that bank of knowledge just checked out and was gone. So that's a very good point. Yeah, I think if Ernie had a reset and had a do-over, he'd probably be in a bit better shape, just in terms of the setup. Ooh. Parker was still giving it some well. Oh, oh and Clennon around. has gone around. Fourth in GTSA. The carousel. And he's one of those guys that's well placed in that uh, points came in after yesterday's round third and needed to make up some time and distance. Doesn't look like he's going to. Uh, he did. Jason Bell was able to get by him. Oh, just in really wide there. Yep. Not sure if uh, Jason had forced him out there, but either way, when you're coming up over that crest of the hill and the break zone, if you get it a little bit wrong and you ask for a little bit more, the wheels are up in the air, literally, and it's hard to make it work. Yeah, and I wonder if maybe, you know, he didn't give a glance in the mirrors. If, you know, Jason's there, and you just miss your turn in a little bit. Yep. It could snap around on you. We're anticipating from race control based on timing and scoring. I think it's going to be tight. Time by white flag, but yeah. It's going to be really tight. Fight. There'll only be a few seconds left on the clock if that. So they've got this long run down the back stretch here. Through the kink. And into the S's. What an impressive year it has been for that whole Panos group in terms of developing this car, getting into race winning form, and dealing with uh, some heavy weight that was put on the car and less restricted since the last round of the championship. That's true. It came in here with a, a big change. This is not the same BOP that was on the car at Road America. They've adapted it beautifully. The balance of performance of the changes that are made to the regulations for each individual brand. Try and keep the uh, level playing field in the GTS championship. You know, it's interesting, you know, to think about it. When this season started at the opening round at St. Pete, and I think the next round as well, Ian was literally ma manual shifting with a stick shift because it was, this is based off of the streetcar. And it was clock is yeah, real tight. Very close. Here we go. And you're right. I think it's going to be like two, three seconds, maybe. Literally. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 
Well, if it had managed the race perfectly, it would have maybe slowed down a little bit through the carousel, but even so, yep. got to make it happen for one more lap. And so, Ian James, steely focus at this stage. The margin down to 1.6 seconds over Lawson, but again, Ian is just managing this thing superbly. Harry Gottsacker, once he got around, he has closed up to within three seconds now. You're going to see him behind uh, Aschenbach. Yeah, he's definitely the fastest uh, guy yep. uh, of this lead trio. However, we're seeing some really fast laps from guys like Courtney. Courtney's running like nearly a second quicker than the leaders right now. He's in clean air. Especially what may have been if they had a good yeah. run yesterday, a clean run, and uh, laid down the lap time to put him further up the grid. Yeah, that Maserati's always quick, and when uh, Jeff is laser focused like this, some really cool things can happen. That pole at VIR and that run there, indicative of that. But right now, it is this guy, Ian James, and this team, Panos Racing, and the Avizano GT, going for their third win of the season potentially here. Three out of four, dominant at Road America. And a nice rebound here, didn't look great to practice and qualifying, but certainly turn things around. And here we go, into the turn. Will it be another win for Panos, this time in the Avizano GT at Mid-Ohio? Out of the last turn, Panos wins at Mid-Ohio. The Avizano GT gets its first win in competition. Look at that, Tom Milner taking that vacation for retirement. Absolutely delighted oh, with this battle. This is for the fourth spot in the grass. It's Francis Jr. got <laughs> I thought him. Chase had got him. Timing and scoring is saying early Francis Jr. secures that fourth position. What a battle. Awesome stuff. Two tires in the dirt and never lifted Ernie. Wow, what a phenomenal finish. Fantastic stuff. You see James and Aschenbach, and the margin at the end for Gottsacker behind Aschenbach was under a second. Harry was flying. Now let's go back and see what's unfolding in that battle in GTSA. Here we go under the front straight and Kurt Scott Gables. Wow. He that got him. huge in the championship. That's massive. And McCallion, what a day. Boy, he said he was maybe thinking of coming back and doing some more of these. He needs to. Wow. What a day for him. Bell will be fourth. And a recovery this, down down the y, mate. this is fantastic. <laughs> Wow, just some unbelievable stuff here. Tremendous racing right now, wrapping up here at Mid-Ohio. Looks like Jeff Courtney might be our VP Racing Fuel's hard charger. I wouldn't be surprised considering where he came from to end up finishing in the sixth spot. And as you pointed out, throwing down some unbelievable laps. Ended up only three tenths off of Ian James' fast lap. That's pretty impressive stuff. And there is Ian enjoying his cool down lap and for him, that victory lap, special stuff. With the rest of the field funneling in, they're gonna make their way into pit lane, and a few of them, the lucky ones, the talented ones, will be ending up talking to Jeff Lepper. When we come back, stay with us. Well, folks, back with you here on the web. Great to have you with us, and you're about ready for some interviews. So, Ian James out of the car. Congratulations from Tom Milner and the rest of the Panos crew. 
Happy and Jeff Lepper's <laughs> right there. Uh, heck, it is, uh, Stephen Pfeiffer comes in as well. Ian James, your third win of the season, able to finally break that streak on double race weekends. Congratulations here today. Well, thanks. First, happy birthday to Stefan. He's 50 today, car number 50. I had to do it, but awesome. You know, Dr. Panos provides us with all this great equipment. Had a great battle there with Lawson. They kind of set the car up to go fast on short stints. We did the opposite, and it went in our favor. Tell us about that pass. How did you set that up? Because it looked like you kind of surprised him a little bit. Was that calculated on your part or just, uh, I'm just going to go for it? Well, I was working him in a certain area around the back, and so I was hoping to get him by surprise. You know, I know I have one chance because he's a pretty uh, good defensive driver, let's say. But big celebrations here for Team Panos, third win of the season. And I'll tell you, absolutely one of the most impressive as you said, Cal, what was it, 15, 20 minutes of racing that we've seen? Certainly, that was a show. That was really cool. As he said, he had to surprise him. Yep. Lawson is always on his toes. All right, yeah, absolutely impressive. So, at this stage, uh, you take a look at the points in this uh, scenario, Cal. Obviously, Lawson Aschenbach at this stage, uh, again, really in, in a way extending his point margin a little bit uh, because it was Martin Barkey who came in here in second spot but the story here is James is closing up and uh, onto that second place yeah he really is I think he may in fact be in front of uh, Barkey at the end of the day here so we'll have to wait for the official point standings but it's going to be totally close here as we finish off the season and in manufacturers points uh, Chevrolet is actually going to expand their margin a little bit over Porsche but Pano starting to close in on second in those points now let's get down and hear from our GTSA category winner and what a race he had Jeff well George Kurtz doubles up here this weekend your sweep of the weekend here congratulations on your win thank you it was a great win uh, we didn't have a great start we got checked up in the beginning but we we're able to just put our heads down and hustle through and uh, it was a long way to go to Gaples and uh, unfortunately I had to wait to the last lap but that's the only lap that counts well, talk to us about that pass. How was that calculated for you to get, get that going? Yeah, I figured I could get him in the uh, in the back straightaway, and I really just wanted to stay tight and keep the gap close. And, uh, I mean, it was uh, the king of late breaks between the two of us. So uh, he was a great driver, and it was clean, and we were able to get through, and we got the win. Well, congratulations. Sweeping the weekend here in that crowd strike, McLaren. Yeah, it was, and I'll tell you, that battle right to the end, absolutely fantastic chase. Let's take a look now at uh, one of our very important awards. We kind of alluded to it, I think, our VP Racing Fuels Hard Charge Award. Jeff Courtney from way back on the grid in the 15th spot, up nine positions on his way to doing that. So congratulations to him and that Ken Direct Stuff Maserati. And our Motul Fast Lap Award winner, he did it fairly early in the race, but the lap that Ian James turned, that 128.205 in the Peno Savazano GT, holds for the Motul Fast Lap Award winner. Cal, tell you, it's always great coming to Mid-Ohio, but now we head a little bit farther west and a little bit higher up in right. the uh, Colorado Plateau. catch your breath there today. You're not <laughs> going to catch your breath there. High altitude racing and uh, great layout there. Always provides a great spectacle. Yeah, looking forward to getting there up in uh, the uh, Great Salt Desert in between the mountain ranges. It's spectacular. But that's going to wrap things up for us here today. For Jeff Lepper, Calvin Fish, and our entire CBS Sports Network crew, I'm Greg Kramer. In association with WC Vision, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.